Hey folks, here at OS Reviews. So as the first generation Chromecast nears its fourth birthday, we are going to find out in this video whether it's still a worthwhile purchase uh, here in 2017. So as a bit of a refresher, the Chromecast is an extension to televisions. It plugs in using a standard full-sized HDMI port and then transforms your TV into a smart TV. So if you're still having a traditional uh, flat screen television, for instance, you can then connect your phone or tablet wirelessly for watching videos on YouTube and other streaming sites without the need for a physical cable to be plugged in. So there's also a bit of hardware that goes along with the Chromecast. There's actually a processor here that's a uh, Marvel uh, 1.2 gigahertz ARM Cortex A9 chipset coupled with 512 megabytes of RAM and there's two gigabytes of built-in flash storage for the operating system. That's a heavily skinned version of just Android actually, which is quite interesting. It supports video output up to 1080p resolution and the weight is 34 grams. And it also supports just Wi-Fi, BG, and N at 2.4 gigahertz. So the biggest differentiator between the first Chromecast and the updated second generation Chromecast that you can still pick up in stores today is the added support for 5G wireless. And that means if your router or network also offers 5G, that will supposedly give you greater bandwidth as well as potentially faster streaming rates if your Wi-Fi uh, network is super cluttered with tons of devices being connected into it. However, if you don't have that many products connected to Wi-Fi at once and your Wi-Fi is also quite fast, then there isn't that huge of a difference in terms of the day-to-day -day performance. Now there's also an upgraded kind of Chrome Chromecast the Ultra version that is double the price of the Chromecast 1 and 2 at around $70 that supports 4K streaming and obviously uses even more bandwidth. But again, the original only supports video output at 1080p, which is already plenty sharp for most people's day-to-day uh, -day uses. Uh, otherwise, the differences between the 1 and 2 in terms of hardware are next to none. They basically have the same chipset and they have the same kind of processing package, so no real differences there it's aside from some aesthetic uh, tweaks. You can see that the Chromecast is made out of a polycarbonate plastic that feels quite sturdy. On the back, you can see the design by Google uh, kind of logo embedded onto the plastic. And there are no other vent ventilation grills. So if you do have this plugged into your television and on at all times, it does, it does get a little bit warm after a few hours of streaming, but it's not a huge concern. The bottom features a standard micro USB port for connecting into power. And just like the second Chromecast, there isn't a built-in battery. So you do have to plug this in at all times uh, for power. There's also a small LED in indication light that will glow when the device is plugged in and turned on. And there's also a reset uh, kind of button that you can tap on once and hold on it to reset your configuration status. So all the hardware uh, mainly still stacks up here four years later. Here we have the Chromecast plugged into power and it boots within seconds. The initial screen is called the backdrop and it displays animated wallpapers and screens that will slowly transition uh, as long as you're connected to the internet. It shows your time, date information, Wi-Fi status, the name of your Chromecast on the bottom corner, and you can also program this page to show specific widgets. So it's fairly customizable and the fact that the back ground changes is good because it prevents burn-ins on your television or display. Um, otherwise, the best thing about the Chromecast is how simple it is to set up and the fact that it just works without too much you know, hassles or having to think about it. Super straightforward. To set up the original version, all you need to do is go to chromecast.com slash setup. And afterwards, your computer, smartphone, uh, or tablet will just search the uh, air available area for any Chromecast. It's going to find it, and then you tap on it, enter your Wi-Fi password, and within a few minutes, you're up and running. It's going to push an update if you are purchasing an older version, but once the update has been completed, you're ready to use it. So to access the Chromecast functions on browsers, you would open up the tab on the upper right-hand corner and go into the Cast screen. After tapping on the cast, you would find the name of the device. Here's an example of that. I'm using a Chromebook, and of course I have Chrome as the browser open. I'm gonna cast it to this Chromecast, which is the one I have right now called OS Reviews. Tapping on that once, and the screen that's showing up on my laptop will be pushed automatically onto the computer. Now you see that this television in particular does a little th funky rendering with the aspect ratio, but of course everything that I want to see and read from my laptop are now visible 
on screen, which is definitely pretty cool. Tapping on stop will also exit out of the mirroring mode. So you can still use it for things like giving quick presentations. And of course, it's uh, going to work very well with specific apps like Netflix, Hulu, uh, you know, streaming sites that have a one push key to just tap on cast and it will show up on your television. What's also pretty cool is once the casting is done, you can also perform any other task on your laptop. So I can be casting a video from YouTube onto here. And since it's not a complete one-to-one -one mirror uh, like HDMI does, uh, I can also be working, maybe opening up a Word document and typing away. And that's not going to disrupt the playback of the video. And that's also because, again, the Chromecast itself has a processor, dedicated memory, dedicated RAM that will be handling the video processing once that action has been pushed over. So it's very clever in how this is all done. It just seems very slick and optimized. Um, so next, let's do a quick video playback. A YouTube app will be opening in the Chromecast. And within a few seconds, we have the device, uh, the video loaded up. And of course, the quality of the video is also quite excellent. It's a full 1080p, sound quality is it's good really as well. In the past decade, that smartphones have become and in terms of the volume and other controls, you can program those just by using your laptop, smartphone, or tablet, and that really just becomes the remote for whatever media you're enjoying, which is quite cool. And I can, of course, I can scrub between parts of the video as well, and those actions will be handled on screen. If you are consistently scrubbing longer videos, there will be a slight one to two second delay. But all in all, again, as long as your internet speeds are swift and there aren't too many devices connected to the band, uh, at once, the video playback remains quite smooth and lucid. So obviously this makes for a great media playback experience, whether it's YouTube videos, whether it's a movie, Netflix, or Hulu. Now I can also add a running queue into the list of videos I want to watch. So that will, you know, play after the current video ends, for instance, or I can just be playing back another video on my browser uh, and, you know, a different video altogether could be playing on the television where the Chromecast is displayed. So that's really a cool multitasking function that they built into this ecosystem. And of course, I can have other tabs open, such as the New York Times, stuff like that if I'm reading the news, but the video is still playing in the background. So that's the original Google Chromecast revisited four years later. In 2017, I still think it's a good purchase. If you have a television, you want to transform into a smart TV without all the messy cables uh, for connecting your smartphones and tablets, using those as remote controls when watching and streaming YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, things like that. It's plenty fast and plenty sharp uh, for most folks. And especially now you can pick it up at sites like Amazon or eBay for under 20 bucks and makes for a steal in terms of the price. So you can check out more details in our throwback article soon, but for now this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This was our look back at the original Google Chromecast.